So you're going to start an adventure. Take one! <laughs> All right. Welcome, Paula Drew. Oh, I Wait, ruined I... it. Okay. Ready? Welcome, Paula. Why Fellow. 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 Linus Fellow. 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 So who says to Northland? I'll say that. Okay. Welcome, fellow dreamers. Welcome, fellow followers. Welcome to Northland Homestead. is kind of a project for us. It's not just um, a YouTube channel. This is us trying to fully actualize who we are and, and what we want to be. Yeah, I mean, basically this is just us taking a step toward some consistency, having a little bit of accountability, almost like a documentary sort of, of us trying to do the things that we've been saying we want to do for so long. And we're trying to do what we want to do now, rather than waiting for best case scenario. And that's kind of our mantra right now, is to just do it anyway, even if it's not the ideal. So um, if that sounds interesting to you, then this might be the right channel for you. Yeah, come with us. Yeah. As I said, we've been working toward something like this for a long time because, I mean, we were from Ohio. Uh, we grew up in the, not obviously not city city life like you, like some people would say, um, but in cities. Whereas now we're finally kind of out and on the, I guess what you could say, the rural side of things. We moved up to Northern Michigan about a year ago, and it's been nice to see the little changes just getting a little more healthy just naturally but overall there's so much lingering lifestyle from how we used to live that this is a way for us to kind of start documenting living differently and starting to actually put action behind the things we want to do. Yeah so some things that we've been successful at here at the homestead has been realizing that rural location is for us that we really really love living out in the country that has been an absolute win. Um, going out to eat less often, absolute win. So we actually moved from Columbus, Ohio to Northern Michigan. Um, and in Columbus, we had access to DoorDash, Uber Eats, all these kind of um, services, and we abused them. And it was so easy to do, just get in that routine of not making your food, but instead just ordering it. It comes to your door. You don't have to see anyone or anything, and it's just easy peasy. Um, so that's been a win because here in this rural location, you don't have access to DoorDash or Uber Eats or any of those. We can't services. even get it. Yeah, we can't even get a pizza delivered, which yeah. sounds kind of terrible, but at the same time for us, it's been great because yeah. now you you have to go out your front door to get something like that which has been helpful and we still do i mean it's not like we don't but yeah. just having that change has been a huge difference and especially a couple years ago when everybody was working from home with the, the whole pandemic um it just put doordash and inactivity into hyperdrive um so we've been kind of recovering from that for a while too but um now we're finally in a place where we wanted to get a get away from all that and you know, it's it's been nice. It's yeah. it's been a slower pace of life too, which is another thing right. that I've enjoyed about being here. Totally. Another win has been um, with the homestead. We inherited a deer fenced in garden. It's small, and we definitely want to expand it eventually when resources are available for us to do so. Um, but that has been a win because last season we were able to grow a lot of tomatoes and um, some other successful uh, vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower and things like that. This year we're going to even try harder and we'll definitely bring you along for that. Um, what's some other wins that we've had with living here? Um, 
honestly, it feels to me just like a lot of small overtime changes. Like, I just feel like last season, it, I mean, just doing what you were mentioning with the garden was so exhausting. And I don't know, I, I, I still get tired pretty easily, you know, but at the same time, I've noticed that just by living here, getting away from a lot of, you know, our old lifestyle, it's just allowed my body, I think, to rebound a little bit. And yeah. so I, that's a big win in my mind, but it's pretty subtle because it happens day in and day out, yeah. just getting away from some of those things. And that's one of the big reasons why we wanted to move up here. Right. Um, we like that's the cold, too. that's still a too. struggle for me. I mean, I know he is in a better physical um, capacity than I am. That's still a struggle for me. And I'll definitely take you along for that, too, on my journey to increase my activity and comfortability with that activity. So today I'm wearing my apron, and you're probably going to see a lot of this apron. I actually made it myself. It was my first ever sewing project. And you're definitely going to be able to tell that it is not perfect by any means. <laughs> I didn't have like a mannequin to attach the fabric to, so I had to kind of just do my best to measure it on my own body. And yeah, it's a little wonky, but I love it. And I'm very proud of it, so I enjoy wearing it. It makes me feel like a proper homesteader. So <laughs> just, you know, forgive some of the imperfections, but I really like it. So one of the things that we're going to be doing today to update the homestead is this big picture window in our living room. This is something that has always kind of bothered me ever since we moved in here about a year ago, and that is these builder's grade rods. I really hate that plastic rod look. It's just not very aesthetically pleasing. And also these are two panel, I'm not sure what you would call these, but they're like the double panel kind of curtain rods. And we only have one set on each side, so we don't need these two extra rods. Also, they sit kind of low on the window here, and it doesn't draw the eye up and create that height that we want, and it also makes these curtains dangle to the floor. So every time when I close them, it kind of covers up the vent, and I have to be really careful about where I put it. So that's why we're going to be updating this today. Well, so far we've removed the rod and the brackets. So all we have to do right now is to caulk in all, or I guess plaster or whatever you call it, filling in these holes that were left from the anchors. Cause obviously you don't want to see that. And eventually we're going to be repainting this room, but for right now we're just getting the curtains up. So baby steps. <laughs> So, so far we have removed the old rod and we have the new brackets up. So now all that we have to do is just kind of tighten the screws because they're a little bit wonky. But we're going to tighten the screws and then we're going to hang the rod and the curtains and then we're done. It's a pretty easy project. It always reminds you to just kind of do those projects that are hanging over your head rather than letting them sit there because once you get started it's really not so bad. No, will make a big difference. You'll yeah. See. So we have the completed update of changing the rod. I think it made a really big difference. I can tell already that the height 
feel so much higher now. Mm. A tip that I have is these uh, curtains used to actually hang in our bedroom, but I recently swapped them for, um, and vice versa them, to where the old ones are now in our room. And that really makes a, a big difference to be able to just kind of swap the colors and the patterns in your rooms if you kind of have a piece of color scheme throughout your house. All right, so I'm back in the kitchen. We've got it all cleaned up from the mess that we made for lunch and making dinner. I've got the dishwasher working for me right now and we're gonna get started on making some bread. have a bulk amount of flour on hand because you use flour for so many things you're going to need a large quantity of it. If you're an ingredients kind of person or ingredients kind of family where you just kind of use ingredients to make your food, you've got to have a big bulk storage of flour. So this is what I have. I think I purchased this at Target originally for a dog food container, but it works beautifully for flour as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refill my more decorative all-purpose flower container, but it's empty now. Oh darn, my, my funnel that I normally use to uh, fill this up so that I don't make a huge mess is actually my dishwasher right now. So I'm just gonna make do with what I've got. <laughs> so it's probably gonna be a bit messy, but that's okay. So I have this big scoop, I think it's a two cup scoop, 
that I use. Normally, like I said, I have a canning funnel that I use to just kind of keep it more neat and tidy, but that's alright. See? Making a mess, but... Oh! But I don't want a big container like this in my kitchen, but I'm able to keep this in my pantry. And that way I always have flour when I need it. It's close to the consistency that we want, but it's not quite there. So the consistency you want is kind of tacky. And you also really want it to be pulling away from the um, mixing bowl, which is not right now. It's kind of still sticking to those sides. So we need to add some more flour. So I'm going to start with about half a cup and see if we need more than that. That's definitely better, but I think we're going to need the full cup. My kids are home, so I better go take care of that real fast. Oh, hi. hi! So the boys are here from school. This is Onyx. He is recently 11. And Boyd, who is recently 8. <laughs> We're glad to have him home. So I'm going to whip up this bread and spend a little time with my kids. <laughs> So our bread is finished proofing, so we're going to punch it down, pull it out, and we're going to knead this for about three minutes. I'm going to flour my surface here. Now that the bread is nice and kneaded, we're going to divide this into two. So we're going to make two loaves. Okay. I'm going to shake that into two loaves. I can tell this one's a little bit thicker, so I'm just going to go ahead and shave off a little and add it to this one. Let's reshape it. Okay, we're going to let that sit for five minutes. Alright, so uh, it's been five minutes, so we're going to remove these and put them in our bread plates. These are nice and oiled. Okay. Alright, we're going to leave these for 30 minutes to rise. And then we'll come back. 
So our loaves have been buttered and they proofed for 30 more minutes, so we're gonna put them in the oven. They're gonna go into a 30, 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until they're hollow when you tap them. Set the timer here. Okay, and I'll definitely bring you along with the finished product. All right, so the bread is done, so I'm gonna pull that from the oven. And that turned out beautifully. I don't know if you can see how beautifully golden brown that is. There's two loaves, which is great, because one will definitely go pretty. Thank you for coming to uh, join us for our first video at Northland Homestead, and we appreciate you watching for this long. Please like and subscribe and join our YouTube family. And we're trying to do what we want to do now, rather than waiting for the best case scenario. And that's kind of our mantra right now, is to just do it anyway, even if it's not the ideal. So, um, if that sounds interesting to you, then this might be the right channel for you. Yeah, come with us.